Thanks, Doctor. Up next, we have Anne Marie. Anne Marie, if you can go ahead and unmute, please. Hi. Hi. Thank you. If you could please repeat the test that you recommended a person at age 45 should take to be yes. proactive. And also, the you had mentioned curcumin and ginger, and I think you mentioned two other spices, and I wasn't able to catch them. Please. Yeah, yeah sure. So, uh, so I, I mentioned cognoscopy. So, uh, you know, the, the idea here is that, you know, everybody knows when you turn uh, when you turn 50, you should get a colonoscopy. But yeah, please don't forget about your brain either. You know, because we know that these, these uh, changes are starting early. So you can literally go on and just look at mycognoscopy.com. You can get a series of blood tests. You can do this directly. It's very easy to do. And look at what your risk factors are. And then you know, get on an appropriate prevention program. It's relatively easy to do. No surprise, again, the earlier you start, the easier it is to get good results. Later and later, it takes more and more to do. We still see some people turning around later and later, but please start as early as possible. Then there are all sorts of things to do in terms of anti-inflammation. As I mentioned earlier, you wanna resolve the inflammation as we've learned uh, previously that it's critical to resolve it first and then also to have an anti-inflammatory, but more important to find out what's causing the inflammation and, and reduce that, remove that. So yes, um, I mentioned you know, ginger, curcumin, omega-3s, resolvins, I mean, there are all sorts of other ways to go at this. Um, you know, everybody has their own favorite uh, for anti-inflammatory effects. And some of this is just you know, eating appropriate anti-inflammatory foods and things like that. Lots and lots of things you can do. Some people like to, you know, like to get uh, uh, their turmeric and just you know, shave a little bit on each meal. That's a common thing that's, that's done. Uh, very, very helpful. So there are lots and lots of ways to go after inflammation, but again, Make sure that you understand why it's there and remove the sorcerers. That's going to be critical. Thanks, Dr. Bredesen. And up next, we have Benny. Benny, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Thank you. Doctor, I've read that heart disease, stroke, and Alzheimer's correlate. Do you think high-fat animal foods may cause amyloids and plant-based diet might prevent or reverse Alzheimer's? Yeah, this is a good point. Um, and so, uh, you know, as with all, all these things, um, there's nuance here. And people often say, you know, what's good for your heart? What's good for your head? Well, in most cases, but, but not always. There, there, there are examples that that's not quite the case. So interestingly, when you're dealing with someone, as an example, uh, APOE 4.4, these people have increased risk for ar arterial disease. They have increased risk uh, for cognitive decline of Alzheimer's as well. But interestingly, they can go on a high fat diet should, it should, typically shouldn't be a high saturated fat diet, but a high good fat diet and their lipid numbers get better. They do very, very well. So the diet that we use is a plant rich, as I mentioned earlier, mildly ketogenic diet. Um, it is rich in fats. It's rich in monounsaturates and polyunsaturates um, and very, very low in carbs and zero with simple carb. We wanna stay away from the simple carbs. You know, and as Mark Hyman has pointed out years ago, there's a triad that you want to stay away with. We call this the, the, the uh, Burfuda triangle, uh, which is kind of silly, but it's an easy thing to remember. So you don't want to have a combination of saturated fats, lack of fiber, and simple carbs. That is a killing triangle because you're now giving yourself, you know, all the negatives without having the nice uh, fiber to, to reduce your glycemic index. And you're now glycating your proteins, you're causing inflammation, you're changing their structure, you're changing their function, and you're really giving yourself an increased risk for both heart disease and brain disease. Thanks, doctor. Up next, we have uh, Vera. Vera, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hello. I was wondering if you will be having a doctor or a scientist in the Connecticut area um, participating in your study uh, later this year that you mentioned? You know, that's a great question. So we're just, it's gonna, th this first group had three physicians. This next one's gonna take eight physicians. Um, and we don't yet know about the Connecticut area. It's a great question. Likely to have someone in Miami, likely to have someone in San Diego, uh, likely to have someone in Cleveland. Um, we don't yet know about Connecticut. It's a great question. We have had people though that have trained in our protocol who are all, who are all over Connecticut, New York uh, area. 
Thanks, Doctor. Up next, we have Marilyn Miller. Uh, yeah, Marilyn, that's right, Marilyn. Thank you. If you can unmute Marilyn, thank you. Hello, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Marilyn. My, my partner um, actually was having some symptoms at you know uh, late 60s, and she went through your protocol with Dr. Nancy Lonsdorf, and it helped tremendously. So I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, Nancy's been fantastic. So glad that she's doing this. And of course, she brings her Ayurvedic training as well. Uh, and, you know, we've heard this story. And by the way, you know, I, I'm in the same situation. I'm, I'm about to turn 70. Um, so I'm thinking about myself and say, hey, you know, I want to make sure that I have as many more years of good cognition as possible. So I'm glad to hear that she got a good result. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, well, and then, so my question is, um, one of the things that we're concerned about is we checked mold because my partner had some indicators on the blood test that she might have been exposed to mold. And yeah. so we had people look at her house and we had the ERMI test. Yeah. But that's really controversial, I found out. Yeah, and then, although this is, you know, this is Environmental Protection Agency set up the ERMI test. Uh, what was her ERMI score? Oh. Um, Hi. It, it was. Fairly, I think it was fairly high, but not Thank not you. terribly. But okay. um, but then we had two mold companies come in, and they said we can't find anything. And then we had our air tested in all the major rooms, and they said no, you don't have a okay. problem. maybe one room that was maybe a little bit. But that's my question: is how do you have any advice? And then I heard the Emma test is better than the ERMI. Do you have any advice on the mold and how to track that down? Yeah, and then of course there's also the Hertz B2 test, which is another good one. So yeah, and you know this is this has come originally from the some of the pioneering work of uh, of Dr. Richie Shoemaker, uh, and uh, you know he found over the years that there were people that had all sorts of different health problems that could be traced back to their exposure to these various mycotoxins and other inflammagens, as he's pointed out. Uh, you know, water damaged buildings have all sorts of problems and people can sometimes even notice and you can measure this. Now, one thing that's really helpful is to combine these things. Did she check her C4A, TGF beta one, MMP9? If these are all completely normal, then it's likely that she's not having major problems with mold. On the other hand, if these things are high, and people sometimes forget to check them. And then when they finally check them, they'll find out, oh my gosh, they're off the, off the charts. Uh, so I think this is very, very helpful to know. I have to say as a classically trained neurologist, I was shocked to see, because we never talked about mold doing anything to anybody. We never talked about whether it was a potentially a cause of cognitive decline or Parkinson's or other problems. And when we started to see patients and started to realize, wait a minute, we've ruled out all these other things. And here they have this tremendous exposure. And when they start to get treated for it, they actually start to improve. You know, I had to say, well, as much as I was very skeptical about that possibility, um, I can't deny the data. It, it just comes back at time and time again. Now, that's not to say that's the only thing. There are people who have other things that also contribute. But for people who have high exposure to these, you, again, you want to look at both. Are the toxins there and is there a response there? So I would check with her, please see about what was her C4A, what was her TGF beta one, what was her MMP9? Dr. Shoemaker likes to look at several others as well, like ADH, for example, and VIP, but no question, these can be very helpful. Then the other thing is look to see, you know, what happens when she's away from that, that source you know, what happens when she when she's out. And then there are some basic things and we have all this is written in the books. Uh, we also have some guides on this, uh, but uh, please check these out. There are all sorts of things you can do for general detox because yes, many of us are exposed. And then you have to figure out, okay, is this just exogenous or am I actually colonized? Because it doesn't help ultimately to remove the exogenous if you've now got colonization that can be, for example, in your sinuses, can be, for example, in your gut. Uh, please check out a wonderful book by Dr. Neil Nathan, who's one of the world's experts on this. Uh, and um, he writes a, a beautiful book um, on uh, associated biotoxins on, on uh, it's called Toxic Heal Your Body. So please check that out as well. Uh, Neil has done a fantastic job with looking and treating 
uh, these toxins. So uh, certainly I agree with your point. And you know, this is a relatively common problem, unfortunately. And so many of us, you know, we're dealing with it, we're, but we don't realize that this is affecting us until down the road when we get problems, inflammatory problems, we get you know, cognitive decline, we get rashes, uh, you know, we get uh, arthritis, things like this that turn out to be, this is really the 21st century is an era in which instead of asking as physicians what it is, what's the diagnosis, we're asking why it is, you know, what is the problem? What, how did it happen? Why did I get cognitive decline? Why did I get arthritis, lupus, you know, on and on and on. Uh, so I think all those things could be helpful for your friend.